I'm going to show you a card today. I'm continuing a little bit on my series of I've had this stamp in my collection for a very long time and haven't used it for a while series. It was an unintentional series. Um, but today I'm going to use the Foxy Friend. It's super cute. And in fact, if you go all the way back to when I first started my YouTube channel, I meant to look, but I think it's the very first video I ever made. Um, it's a really cute little set, but I think this is one of the first videos I made. So it's a green logo, which means we've had it for more than a minute because the new stamp um, cases are black. So I'm going to use it um, with the celebration paper that has the mushrooms on it because this stamp set has mushrooms and it has little leaves and you can get it to coordinate really well. And the um, stamps that go with this because when you buy a hundred dollars right now you get this paper and a matching stamp set for free but the stamps are more realistic looking and i like the mushrooms are a little bit whimsical to me so i like the way that this and um stamp set goes with the whimsy of this paper in fact i have another stamp set that i'm going to do the storybook stamp set that is also whimsy and i'm going to put it with this if you love this paper um, remember the consumable some consumable celebration stuff sometimes it runs out in fact today on this card I'm going to use these butterfly elements and these are getting close to running out so always get the consumable things before you get the stamps because Stampin' Up! makes our stamps so those will always be around to the very end but I am going to use this it's not a difficult card and it doesn't take long I just have lots of steps um, and some tips and tricks I'm going to show you, which will make it seem like it's taking a little bit longer. But it's going to use the Mango Melody, which is a super fun color. It's one of our new colors. And because when we got the new colors last year, you know, it goes annual catalog and it goes straight into holiday catalog, it feels like. Um, so this has gotten not as much use as it should, because that's a beautiful color. And then this is going to be mounted behind it. And then I've already taken the time to run this through the stitched rectangle because we've seen me do that. These are in the occasions catalog. So it just puts the stitch on it. And if you haven't seen that, go back a couple videos because I've used the heck out of these recently. So I didn't think you needed to see that. And then I've already taken the time to stamp my little fox and I used crumb cake. And then I only did that so I could cut him out because I knew you didn't want to watch that. I'm going to switch this card up a little bit. Haven't made it, but switch it up from my sample. So we'll see how it looks. In my sample, she's standing on um, the wood stump. In this one, I'm going to try to spread my mushrooms out so you can see the mushrooms a little bit better and see if she's a little less cluttered. So, you know, nothing like always going with this on the fly. But we'll see how she goes. And then this is Poppy. Um, Poppy Parade, which is also in the card. And it's just a bright and cheery fun card. So first I'm going to show you, sometimes when you stamp with the, the solid image stamps like this, um, it can be a little blotchy. So I don't want my card, I don't want this the blotch on here. So I'm going to color it with my blends. So this is the light crumb cake. Ew. I took these yesterday to my, yesterday to my friend's house. I might have to go over to my regular blends that I didn't take. Oh, here they are. Because my daughter also borrowed my blends yesterday. So I don't need these gray, the smoky slate. She borrowed those. I pulled everything back out of my bag. So first I'm going to use the light crumb cake. And where these little splotches are, I'm just going to cover those back up. And first I'm going to do it with the light, which is not quite the crumb cake. But then I also don't want her face to be white. So I'm just going to cover up. And then these stamps are also designed so they can be used with the punch that comes with the, that matches. So she's kind of separated. Because you get a tail punch. I don't want her to be separated on my card. So I'm just going to color all that white space where her neck is separated and her tail is separated. I'm just going to join her, join her back. So I'm going to color all this in, and then the tip of her tail, I also don't want to be white. So because I have the light color crumb cake, and it, you don't have to let your stamping dry. I only stamped earlier so I could cut it out. It doesn't have to, you don't have to wait for it to dry. 
but because I have the light crumb cake, I'm able to go over all this white and it leaves the definition of the, the dark. So I'm gonna use two tones of crumb cake. And there's no shading or anything, it's just pulling her in there. Oh, and I didn't pull her face out. That's what happens when you stamp at two different places yesterday. Here she is, she's on with the mushrooms. I didn't, wasn't sure where I, I, it. I knew that I'd used it. So there we go. And you can kind of just keep doing it till it's got enough. And so then I still want her to look a little bit more not blotchy. Although she could be a spotty fox. But now I'm just going to take my darker crumb cake. Yes, I wanted to make sure you didn't pick up my bronze. And just take the brush tip and just lightly go over the places where I have where the solid just because it's a photopolymer and you know sometimes when you lift, lift up on those they just are a little bubbly. This is just going to make her nice and strong colored crumb cake. You wouldn't have to do this step. It just makes her cute. In fact, she would be another cute home decor piece um, in the fall because her colors are more autumn-like. And you could put her in the little frame, especially because I'm going to use some ribbon in the, the wood elements. So there we go. And then you could do the same thing, which I did do on my other card on her, the top of her face. But I'm going to just leave that just for time. So you can see she went from being blotchy to now she's nice and smooth. And then you got to put her face on her. And this, this set comes with several faces. And what I do is you kind of line them up because there's closer together faces, there's raccoon faces, there's deer faces. And you just kind of decide where you want them to go. This is kind of high up. This is the one I used yesterday. This is the one I have a Christmas card too, and that's the one I used when I made the deer. So because I stamped twice yesterday on video, I have both of them on there. So make sure, let me make sure I'm getting the one that I want. And I'm gonna flip her around. I know it'll be upside down for you, but I don't wanna do my eyes upside down. Yeah, this is the one I want. So you wanna make sure when you stamp with the eyes that you're not going to get a raccoon face so don't get ink everywhere except on her nose and her eyes it just adds so much when she has her little face on there so now she's done and then to make a little background panel, as I said before, and I'll show you the other card. I haven't cut out between her legs, but I noticed that now. She's standing on the wood, the piece of wood that comes with it. I'm going to leave that part off, and we'll see how that looks. But this set comes with three separate mushrooms. And on the other card, I have used all three. And so what I did, because they're photopolymer, and you can just kind of line them up wherever you want. So I lined up all three. I'm going to take this little one off. And I'm just going to use these two on this card. So I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and we'll see if it turns out. And you know, sometimes I don't use scrap paper. I just use the base of my card because I know it's gonna get covered up. So you could use scrap if you want. And I'm gonna go back to the crumb cake and I'm gonna stamp these two little mushrooms all the way across the bottom of my piece of paper. Because I love the mushrooms and I love the fact that they really match the paper I didn't love the little one so much because it was solid and I really liked coloring with it. So that's part of the reason I took it off. And I didn't like the wood just made the card kind of busy and it also covered up some of the cute mushrooms. That's why I'm leaving it off this time. So we'll see when it's said and done. If I don't, if I like it better with the wood, I can go ahead and stick it back on there. So there's my little mushrooms. And then this piece also comes, the stamp set comes with um, some leaves. And the leaves actually are very, very similar to these leaves in the paper right here. So 
it's all dirty because I didn't clean any of these from when I steamed yesterday. I'm going to end up with dirty hands. So this piece, when you get it in the cattle, in the stamp set, it's kind of wide, and it's wider than I want for this. Although now that I'm not using the wood, it can be a little wider. I was trying to get it to circle the wood before. Um, but when you use photopolymer, you know, when you place them on your blocks, you can bend them to whatever shape you want. So I don't need it quite as bent as I did it the first time. So just kind of put it on there. And place it how you want. That's also how you get your photopolymer stamps to line up when you're using them with a die. Sometimes if, you're, if your stamps aren't the way they want, you want them to like cut through your die, then lay your die on your block and lay your stamp in it and then pull it up. So I'm going to use Lemon Lime Twist because that's the color that's in the paper. And then to make it look like it matches the paper, I want to watercolor it. So I'm just going to kind of stamp this here. And it has these two little ferns, which also kind of match the stuff in the paper. So I'm just going to kind of stick these. And these also got lost when I used the the wood base. I'm hoping you can see these a little bit better. Just stamp those down here. And then in the paper they're shaded and they have berries. So I'm going to use my blends. So I'm going to take, this is the dark shaded spruce. And I'm just going to draw a little line inside each one of my leaves. Just like this, super quick. And then we don't have anything to blend it with because we don't have a lemon lime twist. So I thought about using pineapple, but I really didn't want to mess with more colors. So what you can do is just take your color lifter. Just take your color lifter and that will blend that little line of the spruce in with your lemon lime twist. So you don't need to have um, the lighter color or the same color because the color lifter, you wouldn't want to do this on a giant area because it would probably bleed. But on these little tiny leaves, it works just fine. And it gives just enough of the shading and just enough of the whimsy on these stamps that it matches, ends up matching perfectly to the paper. It doesn't take long. like that. So now it's instead of having a straight line it's got a little bit of blending and then all of the um, leaves and things in these things have berries in the leaves. So I'm just going to take the dotted end of my um, blend, the poppy blend, and literally you just dot it and it comes out nearly a perfect circle every time. So this gives that same look that the paper has with the berries. It's not the same pattern because those are more like leaves of berries, but it pulls the color in. And it doesn't have to be perfect because our fox is going to cover up part of it. But it does put it back there. So now we've got that. And then the mushrooms are colored poppy and marigold. Or pumpkin pie I guess kind of both so I'm just going to take this and again we're going for whimsy on these I know the paper is a little bit whimsy a little bit more realistic but for this we're just gonna kind of go not a super amount of shading or anything just kind of back and forth I'm going to get some pumpkin pie. I'm 
You can see how it's a nice fall look. The first card I did with this, well, I actually messed with this card for a little bit longer than what you would think a whimsy card deserve, deserves because we were doing it for our group video. Um, and I spent too much time, time, time trying to make them match the paper. And then when it was all said and done, I'm like, they don't need to match the paper. I did a bunch of shading. I tried to make them look like they were all part of the paper. They don't need that. The whimsy's fine, and then once you put all of the, the fox and all of her pieces on here, they just end up being a highlight piece anyway, so. There we go. I'm gonna finish cutting out her little feet that I missed when I cut her out the first time. So here she's going to mount here. And on my other one, she's standing on a block of wood, so it covers up some of that. And then, she, because she's a girl, and because I love this ribbon and there was no place else to put it, I'm going to tie some around her neck and give her a little bow. So I've just doubled it over because I always double this ribbon because you can't have too much of the, the tool polka dot ribbon. And someday when they take it away from me, I'll have to learn how to make cards without it again. So it ties perfectly around her, her little neck. So she's a little fancy fox. And then I'll trim that when I get her on the card so I can see exactly where I want it to go. And then one last touch are the wood elements because these little pieces right here, look, they match, they match this piece, stamp piece, in the Foxy Friends. So if you don't have the paper but you have the Foxy Friends, you might want to get these butterfly elements because between the butterflies and the little leaves, it goes perfectly well. But I'm going to show you how I've been using these so you don't get your hands dirty. Because, you know, sometimes we like the wood. And actually, the wood color looks okay with this paper. But we like to have them colored, too, so they can match. But then you s put your fingers on here, and then you're all dirty. So take your take your pick tool. And you actually need the little sticky end. Pull it off and get a fresh piece. And then you just... Pick it up with your sticky and then just mash it in here. With, if the sticky part gets inky, then it's no longer sticky, so just pull another little piece off. But see, sticky and your hands are not dirty. I do have a piece of scrap paper over here so my table doesn't get green because you want to lay it upside down again until you're ready to put it on your card. So let me get one more, because I want two of these. And there's a couple different sizes, so I'm gonna pick a bigger one and a little one for my card. See, and it just takes a little bit. And then you have the green on there. And then I just take the spatula tip that I don't put back in here, just so I have two pieces to work with, and I just knock it off. And then I'll get a, you can use a flower or a butterfly, so I think I'll go for a butterfly. And I'm gonna use the pumpkin pie. And let's see if there's a little... I had all of these in my bag. I told you I took all this stuff to my friend's house yesterday. And when we got home, we heard the... My daughter was with me. And we heard my bag... We heard something fall over in the trunk. And when we got home, it was this. And it had tumped. And all of my butterfly embellishments were all over the back of the car. And some of them fell in the driveway. And I'm like, well, you know what? They were free celebrations. Some of them are still in the trunk. Some of them fell, fell down like in between where the trunk thing opens. I'm like, I'll just get some more. But then this morning, that was when we got the update that, oh, guess what? They're running out. I'm like, well, probably if I'd known that they were running out, I might have been a little bit more industrious of picking them up. So here's the little pumpkin pie ones. So I'm just going to put those there so they can dry until I need them to be where they want to go on my card. So now just stick all this together. 
carry my piece over here. I also like the back piece of this. This paper is one of those ones that I like all of the sides of all of it. But because I love the mushroom side so much, I really don't want to use um, the other beautiful poppy side because I would really like it underneath this, but I don't want to waste the mushroom side and then run out of it because I do have a couple more cards I want to show you. The one with the storybook and then I have a couple of them you've seen sneak peeks if you watched my Facebook lives. So here's this one here. And then get some dimensionals. On my little box. I'm going to do the Christmas one. It won't take as long as she doesn't, the fox doesn't. She's not a fox, she's a deer on my Christmas one. Um, but she also doesn't have any wood elements on her, so she's a little bit quicker. And she doesn't have as much to color either because she doesn't have the mushrooms. So she's a little bit quicker of a card. So we'll stand her here. And we'll trim up her little bow. Because she's so fancy. She's a fun little stamp set. She would make she makes cute baby cards. The my first video isn't she stamped as a deer, and it's a baby card. And then you take your glue dot, and I take this end that I still haven't. I often use this piece not stuck in the end of the thing because one of my friends got me this. That's one of my most asked questions. One of my demonstrator downline got this for me when we went to Orlando so don't ask me where I got it because I did not get it she got it for me so if you hold this by the edge and let it sit for a minute then it's dry enough and this one little glue dot will hold it in place in fact I when I put my first one on I didn't like where it was and I tried to move it and my leaf snapped off I was able to glue it back where I wanted in pieces just like a little puzzle but one glue dot is more than sufficient to hold these. And because she's on a dimensional, see, it's kind of stuck. I'm going to get it there. Optical illusion that it's going underneath her. But just a little bit. This little fox of the set reminds me of my cat. It's probably part of the reason I like her so much. And just pick up your butterfly. Stick this up here, and then you're done. Super cute, would be a great little girl's birthday card. Here's the one, it's a little busier. I think I like it better without the wood. You can comment below and tell me which way you prefer it. So here she is this way, and then here she is with the wood. But this paper is super fun and it's free. So it's a great, um, the stamp set when you look it up in the catalog does not show the punch with it because it was sold as a bundle when it first came out, but the punch is still available and it punches out um, the Fox pieces, which when I do the Christmas card, if you saw the original card when I did a Facebook Live, I didn't punch it out, but I am going to use the punch when I do the Christmas card. So I hope you enjoy that and I hope you have a great day. If you um, need any of the supplies to make that, I always appreciate all of your purchases and I will list all of the supplies down below this video. And you can go over to my website. It's stampinonline.com. Have a great day. Bye.